We've had one, yes. But what about second Grogu? Today I'm making something that is so stupid and I'm so excited about it. I'm gonna turn second Grogu into a baby orc. Six months ago, I saw this meme, and ever since I haven't been able to stop thinking about baby orcs, so it begins. I bought my first Grogu on Amazon about a year ago, link below, and I love him so much. He's been living on my mantelpiece, so I bought a second Grogu. Yes, I took his <laughs> I have committed crimes. I feel so mean. I'm sorry, Grogu. So first off, I just wanted to change the shape of the ears a little bit. I used an X-Acto knife to cut out some space behind the ears so I could fold them back. He's having plastic surgery right now. I used a sharp leather working needle to sew the ears back so that they would sit just a little bit of a different profile from the original Grogu. I used this clay to cover the head. Initially I started with just covering the stitches, but then quickly realized I had to cover the whole head, so I made a bit of a wire armature using wire and tinfoil, and then I covered the entire head in clay. I'd never used this clay before. It's not very good for doing details. It was really difficult to smooth out. However, for this project, it worked perfectly fine. Just using some tools to add some texture to his head. This was mainly to hide the fact that I couldn't smooth the clay out worth a damn, but it actually ended up working. Okay, so I'm setting the head aside to dry for 47 business days. I went in harder than I intended to on this like ridge situation. I kind of regret it, but I'm going to add some hair up here, I think. He's got this like sad little mouth. I tried to do teeth and it just looked unhinged. Here's one of my cursed concept sketches that I did before I started this project. So first up I made him some chain mail. I ended up using it as little pauldrons on his shoulders. Chain mail is such a slow process. This is sped up like a hundred times. Two thousand years later. I made them purposely messy with some little dangly bit. I also attached together these little chain danglies. Somebody had given these to me a long time ago and they were sort of starting to turn color so I attached those together. Next up I made a paper pattern for his leather bodice. I also designed that shoulder armor which I didn't end up using in the end. Here I'm just taking some leather scraps and roughing them up. I'm using a dull skiver and an exacto knife and just trying to make this look really messy and weathered have some skill with a blade. These are just for little dangly bits that are going to go underneath the armor. Now I'm using some veg tan cowhide and I'm tracing the armor onto the cowhide, cutting it out with an exacto knife. I think I used about a five ounce here. I purposefully picked some of my nastier leather because I wanted it to look super weathered. You can see here that there's all kinds of brands on this piece. I wanted it to look orcish. I like to trace around my leather patterns with a dull pencil. Here I'm just layering the armor and trying to get a sense for how it's going to fit on his little body. It's just sort of taped in place here so I can figure it out. And his little wrist cuffs. Now I'm punching some holes along the spine of the bodice. I wanted to add some spikes coming down along his spine. Now I'm wetting the armor so I can tool it and shape it. I'm tracing over the pattern with a little stylus here. I just added a little swivel knife line along the edge of the armor. Now I am beating the hell out of the armor with anything and everything that is within arm's reach. This is just to create a really weathered look. I wanted the armor to look like it's been in battle. This is an orc, so nothing is nice and shiny and new. Everything is really in rough shape. Honestly, this is so much fun. Hitting it with a ruler now, scrunching it and rolling it. Now I'm just stretching out those holes for the spikes to come through. Now I'm just shaping the armor. I'm adding some ridges, holding up the corners, and trying it on his little body. Just shaping the neckline here a little bit. Then I made him a belt. 
Then I hand dyed all the veg tan cowhide. I'm using a brown from Feebings here and applying it with a wool dauber. I purposefully made the along the arms and the edges a little bit darker, again to just add to that weathered look. Now I'm adding some leather finish to seal the color in, otherwise it will bleed. I like to use acrylic resiline. Now I'm adding some holes along the edges of the bodice so that I can stitch it together. And I'm stitching it purposefully messy because this is an orcs's. Then I fully abandoned Reason for Madness and decided to make tiny little scale mail. I've made scale mail before in a much larger scale, but this was so tiny. Each individual scale is cut out. I'm just tracing around this pattern with a pen. This is veg tan cowhide again. Now I'm punching holes. It's much easier to do all of this while it's all in one strip rather than each tiny little individual piece. Now I'm casing the leather. This is a little, I think it's a mule's foot stamp. And now I'm cutting each scale out with some sharp leather scissors. Normally I don't personally like using pen to trace around patterns, but I didn't really care if this was messy. All the little scales. Now I'm dyeing them. I just decided to dip dye them to make it a little bit simpler, and I purposefully used a whole bunch of different colors because I wanted them to not all be the same. I think I used a brown and a buckskin and maybe a burgundy. And now I'm sort of shaping each scale into a scale shape. That's one of the great things about veg tan leather is if you wet it, you can shape it, and once it's dry, it will hold its shape. Now I'm just adding some leather finish to seal that dye in. Here are my little multicolored scales all dyed. It's always a good idea to create sort of a bridge for scale mail just so that everything is evenly spaced. I just used some graph paper. I laid this graph paper on top of my leather and now I'm poking through it using a awl to mark where each of the rivet holes is gonna go. Now I'm punching each of those rivet holes and I'm starting to rivet. These are the tiniest little rivets that I have, and they're still almost too long, but they worked. I just went row by row starting at the bottom, so each subsequent row is covering up the row underneath. I actually could have patterned this a little bit better. Ideally, you don't want to see your rivets at the end, and I failed in that regard, but I ended up weathering it to cover up that mistake. These are double cap rivets, and I'm just using a rivet setter to hammer them into place. Here I'm getting a sense of the full look. You can see how I used all the different colors and that was really intentional. I wanted it to have a lot of dimension like that. Here you can see how I, the rivets are way too visible. So I'm going to hide those crimes by weathering the crap out of it. This is just acrylic paint and this new product that I discovered, which is acrylic texture sand. It's in the same section of the craft store as acrylic paints. And I used it extensively in this project. I'm kind of dabbing the paint on and rubbing it off of the surface a little bit. So the grime sort of goes down into the holes. Then I took some black fabric from my fabric stash and just made him a little tunic. I needed something to go underneath his armor so you wouldn't see his little fuzzy green body. This is just a basic shirt pattern and I sewed it together using my sewing machine. Then I used some rattier looking fabric and just layered it over top. I'm weathering it here using an X-Acto knife. I wanted it to look really torn and ripped. This is leftover fabric from my Arondir shirt, actually. If you see me wearing a Band-Aid later in this video, uh, yeah, I wasn't aiming very well with that X-Acto knife. <laughs> Here's that texture stand I was talking about. It comes out sort of gray and gritty. You can mix it with any color of acrylic paint to create sort of a gritty texture. I used it so much on this project. It's wonderful for weathering because it creates sort of a muddy look without having it actually be dirty. These are some just some craft store feathers and I'm griming them up and I'm gonna work them into his armor somewhere. This is some faux fur that I had left over from another project. I'm dirtying it up to see if it's gonna work for orc hair. I'm really liking the way it's looking, but I've decided that I think it's better if I glue it to his head first before I weather it. That way I can pull it into shape. These are gonna be his hip pads and I'm obviously not gonna use them purple cause that would be insane. I'm just coloring different parts of the faux fur with different colors just to make it look really weathered. I intentionally used the texture sand at the very bottom so it looked sort of like he'd been walking through mud. Here I'm laying out some of the leather pieces to try to figure out how I'm going to put this all together. Some of these are going to be pauldrons and some of them are going to be sort of loincloths. Now I normally use barge cement for gluing leather together, but I was really not concerned about durability here. I'm using E6000 glue just because I happen to have a little tube left over that I needed to use up. Just clipping it together for some clamps so that it can dry. Now I'm going to attach his scale mail to his little leather belt and 
clamping that together. These are his little leather cuffs. They have two layers, so I'm just gluing those layers together. Again, I'm really not concerned about durability with this project. He's just gonna sit on my mantelpiece, so <laughs> I did things a lot more haphazardly than I normally would. I used some clay to make some little bones and teeth. I didn't end up using all of these in the end. I used these little teeth to create spikes along the spine. I posted on Instagram asking what kind of orc accessories a baby orc would have, and everybody gave some great suggestions. I made him a little water jug and painted it later. Someone suggested that I include something in my orc's costume that was a nod to the Mandalorian, and I've decided I wanted to give him like a little bag to keep some of his trinkets in, and so I'm thinking of making it like an across the shoulder bag. Some bones on the strap, sort of a nod to Mando's bandolier. These are left over from my Aragorn cosplay, actually. Should I or should I not put a tiny little Grogu in his side pouch? Ooh, or a tiny Mando. Sewed it purposefully messy to be all orc-like. But since I made those bones, a coworker of mine gave me some actual real bones and teeth. So I remade it with those. It looks a hot mess, but you know what? It's more orc-like than what it used to be. My glue is now dry, so I'm just unclamping everything. I'm just trimming the top of the leather off of there and layering it on top of the little loincloth that I made him, trying to figure out how all of these separate pieces are gonna go together. Here's his little fur hip pads. I just stitched the fur hip pads onto the belt to hold it in place. And then I added in the feathers, stitched in as well, those thread wraps around the top of the feathers to hold them. Then I also stitched in some of those little chain danglies that I made. Here's the finished hip belt. I dirtied up the chains as well, obviously. So I gave Grognak just a base coat of a dark wrought iron. I'm gonna add a lot more color and texture on top of it. And then I added some hair. Obviously, again, this hair is not staying this color because that would be psychotic. Then I weathered his hair so it looked all orcish and grimy. I used a bunch of different colors, some green, some brown, some black. And look, here I'm actually wearing gloves. I feel like we should have a drinking game where every time you catch me doing something really messy without wearing gloves, because I do it, oh yeah, here, a lot. I do it a lot. Now I'm using a sponge to dab some color onto his head. Coloring orc skin is so outside of my wheelhouse and I did so many layers of this before I was happy with it. I wanted it to be green just because I wanted it to be a nod to Grogu again. Adding in some brown, some shading. This was a really long, slow process. Now I'm giving him his piercings back. This was super finicky. Just adding a little dark orc blood around the bases of his piercings. Then I painted his hands, which I completely forgot about. <laughs> I used a dark black and then dabbed green on with a sponge, added some brown, some gray, and then came back in with some dark wrought iron on the folds in his fingers just to create some definition. Now, it turned out with the clay that his head was way too heavy for his body. He couldn't hold his body up. So what I did is I used a Trenta-sized Starbucks cup. I cut a plastic circle for the bottom, and I filled the cup with gravel to give his body some weight so he wouldn't tip over. Then I just taped the circle to the cup, and this is inside of his body. You would never know it. I pulled all of the stuffing out of his body so that I could put the cup inside. The horror. And then I stuffed around the cup so that he still has a nice soft body. And now we can finally put him together. I'm so excited. Here's his little tunic first. Then we're going to put his leather bodice on. I actually ended up having to unstitch the shoulders to be able to attach his head because I didn't have enough room. Here's his little body and time for his head to go on. I attached it the same way it was attached in the first place with a zip tie. Now I'm going to put his belt on. I figured out how tight it was going to be, wrapping it around his little body. And then I punched a hole in the back of the belt to attach it together with a rivet. He doesn't even have a belt buckle. Punching a hole here, attaching the rivet. Then I had to slide it up his body, which was a little bit tricky. His back loincloth, so I tucked it underneath and just glued it in place. Now I'm moving on to the pauldrons. So he's got some messy leather on the shoulders covered with that chain mail, which I had dirtied up using acrylic paint and texture paste. I'm just poking with an awl to mark where the holes need to be and then hand punching them. I used a thick suede leather lace to stitch the chain mail onto the pauldrons. 
and then I did my final weathering, once again using acrylic paint and texture paste in different colors, brown, black, gray. I put his little side bag on, just adding a little extra grime here and there to tie the whole costume together. Look, I'm not wearing gloves again. Here's all his orc accessories. So he's got a little piece of maggoty bread, a rock, a little bone, which is a real bone, a stick with moss on it, water jug with the white hand on the bottom. I made that out of clay and painted it. A knife that was also made out of clay and painted, and it's got the white hand on the bottom as well. And his last orc accessory is just for my pure amusement. I would like to see the baby. It's a picture of Pedro Pascal because uh, Mando keeps Grogu in his side pouch. And here is the finished orc. His name is Grognach. Do you know how the orcs first came into being? They were elves once. Taken by the dark powers. Tortured and mutilated. A ruined and terrible form of life. And now... Perfected. Whom do you serve? 